Welcome to Foundation Repair Success Secrets, the podcast that's rocking the foundation repair industry. Discover how to boost your leads, raise your profits, and lift your digital presence. Together, let's dig deep and transform your foundation repair business. Hey guys, uh, welcome. We are on Foundation Repair Success Secrets, and we have a super monster guest, none other than Mr. Derek Ricci. Derek, welcome. Yeah, it's great. Hey, Chayton, it's great to be on this uh, this Zoom call with you. Uh, good morning. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Well, Derek, tell me about you. I know you you have a really cool story, in my opinion. You have a really cool story. Um, I know you know your story is pretty amazing, but um, what got you where you are and, and what are you doing these days? Yeah, so just my background. So Basically, I actually uh, received a marketing degree from the Ohio State University. Everybody always jokes when we say the Ohio State University. But yeah, <laughs> so I actually major in marketing. What, what's cool about all that is I'm actually using my degree. You know, I actually oh, yeah. marketing at the Ohio State University and, and I'm using it. So and I've been using my degree since I've been, you know, out of school, out of college. So since 1991, I've been a marketing agency slash marketing consultant, and uh, it's been an amazing ride. It's been an awesome ride. So I came down here to Atlanta in 1991. My college boys were down here, and uh, you know, I uh, was hanging out on on St. Patty's Day, 1990, and a year later, I packed my bags and moved to Atlanta. So I started my agency in spring of '91. And uh, I had a great mentor, God rest his soul, uh, Jose Ojeda, who got me started with my agency. And uh, I actually worked with uh, the ever so fa fabulous Tim McVeigh, who was the station manager of Channel 2 back in the day and uh, with Cox, you know, Enterprise. Mm. And then I morphed, you know, around 2008, I morphed my agency into a full service agency, which, would, which was basically budget strategy media buying implementation tracking you know and uh probably work with over i don't know 100 clients in the wow. last in the last 30 years and uh most recently i've dummied down to just me you know as i've gotten mm. older you know i've just simplified everything and just you know the great thing is my clients get 100 percent me now and uh you know uh it's i don't have all the aggro and all the the pressure of of having to hire employees and keep employees so uh it's it's been an amazing ride 32 years going yeah it's amazing and derek the great thing guys with him and his services is he to this day oversees i feel behemoth companies you know sometimes they're smaller medium large he has worked with massive companies through his career he's still working with in my i mean multi multi multi-million dollar year firms uh, but he's also accessible where he could take all of his wisdom and work with a firm. I, I guess, Derek, what would you say doing a few million dollars a year is kind of your entry point? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I work with companies that are right around a million, you know, two, three million. It doesn't mean I can't work with a $10 million company, but I do, you know, my, my niche is that million dollar company that just needs help with their marketing to take it to five, 10, 15, 20 million. Right. Okay. Well, and beautiful. So being here on the Foundation Repair Success Secrets podcast, uh, some behind the scenes guys, Derek and I met a few years ago. Uh, I think it was a cold call and I was like, hey man, we have a, a really weird website. It's for foundation, uh, water, you know, waterproofing. And we're getting something like, you know, 80, 100 opportunities every single month through it. But guess what? We're just a little marketing company. We're not, uh, you know, we don't do the work of foundation or waterproofing. Uh, Derek was with a company really well respected in Atlanta, and uh, maybe you could touch on that. Like, what you know, we don't need to say the company's name, but what is Derek doing in these companies? Like, with them as an example, what were some of the responsibilities? And I know the milestones that you hit were huge. Yeah, it was a super great run. So I worked with a you know very uh, well known uh, foundation repair you know company in, in Atlanta. You know, started work with them back in 2011. And what I did was back then was jingles were still pretty big. You know, jingles mm. were still pretty big. So I came up with a jingle concept and uh, and just branded that jingle via billboards, radio, TV. And it was just awesome. And we were mm. able to stay away from investing a bunch of money in Google AdWords. Sure. Um, a lot of, you know, small businesses' budgets are 
you know, five, 10, 15, 20 grand a month with Google AdWords. And, you know, they're just hundred percent relied, you know, you know, relied on Google, Google. Well, my model, you're not. So what mm-hmm. I did was, is I branded that jingle, you know, with billboards, radio and TV so that when somebody had water in their basement or had a crack, crack in their foundation, or, you know, had an issue with their, their, their concrete, you know, with Polylift, uh, the name to know was, was this particular company. And uh, I basically grew them, Chayton, from, you know, 3 million to 18 million over a 10 year period. It was, it was awesome. It was an awesome run. That is crazy. Can you tell us some of the wisdom for the foundation waterproofing companies that are listening? Um, I don't want to give away your secret sauce. I know some of them, they can afford you or they can't afford you or they're out of your target market, uh, maybe geography wise. Um, can you give us maybe some of those insights that you're that you're able to share with us? Of course, we don't want to give away the farm. Yeah, yeah. It's not rocket scientists. You know, it's, it's an old cliche, Chayton. You know, you got to be consistent. You know, you, you've got to mm-hmm. course. But basically what I do is I market to what I call a deliverable that I have, which is called a marketing matrix. It's basically uh, an Excel, you know, uh, file on steroids. So what I do is I plug in, you know, the previous year's monthly revenue numbers, monthly marketing, you know, numbers. And then now I, now I know where that particular client's been. Right. And then we Mm -hmm. talk about where, where that client is right now. And then we talk about where they want to go. Well, if they want to grow at a 20% increase, well, I market to that 20% increase, which means I put a marketing budget percentage, usually between five and 10% on that 20% increase number. You know, okay. lots, a lot of small businesses cheat and make a big mistake where they market to the previous year's numbers. And guess what? They're going to hit the previous year's numbers. Mm. So what I do is, is I put together a budget strategy plan to market towards the projected goals. Now, if my particular client wants to come in at 8% actual marketing budget percentage, Uh, percentage by the end of the year my job is to adjust that budget based on the market so that i you know i don't overspend and and we come in at an actual eight percent marketing budget but yeah so then i i put together the strategy you know with with my client's help and then i implement it so i've done all my own media buying over the last 32 years i have bought around 50 million dollars worth of media uh, in the marketplace in Atlanta. So I've done all my own media buying. I, I'm, it's probably one of my strengths actually is media buying and all my relationships with all these vendors in, in, in Atlanta. And then I implement it, you know, I handle the creative, I got a freelance creative, creative guy that, that, that handles all my creative and, uh, and then we track it, you know, the stuff that we can track, we track, uh, hmm. the stuff can't track we don't uh the billboards radio and tv are more more of a branding play so you can't really track that but you can track it on monthly increased revenue numbers so yeah it, it's a model that i've implemented uh, that i've revived and tweaked and changed and adapted to the marketplace you know over the last three decades and uh you know hey at 56 years old I'm, I'm still still loving what i do yeah yeah and you guys are still way relevant way way relevant in my world, obviously, we're, we're the digital side. And, you know, if you asked me a few years ago, if billboards were important and radio ads, I probably would have been a little bit more crass and been like, man, come on, that's old school. But clearly, these days, uh, obviously, as I've matured in the business, I'm like, we need a Derek. <laughs> we need billboard. I mean, I can't tell you, I feel like almost every billboard these days is monopolized by lawyers, you know, uh, personal injury. They're not dumb people. <laughs> Um, your clients and you are are very, very sharp. So guys, obviously there's the digital end. That's what we help with. Derek obviously has a, a pretty nice reach into that as well. But there are, the, the radio is huge. And especially for the people that are the end customers or clients of the people you work with, there is a whole thing you could get into about age and demographics and wealth and, you know, um, yeah, can you tell me maybe some of the the wins or, or fun aspects of radio and TV? I mean, you're talking about doing shoots and all kinds of fun stuff. Is there any like memorable experiences of particular videos or billboards that just you know did amazing or had a really cool response in the community? Oh yeah, thanks, thanks, Chate. And I I should have brought my picture up upstairs. I got a picture with a monkey. Um, so <laughs> back, back in the day, I worked with a plumbing company that. In Atlanta, everybody knows uh, I took a, a plum, plumbing company from a couple million to 18 million over a 10-year period. And 
who came up with an awesome campaign and it was tied around a monkey. So mm. first and foremost, I had to find a monkey, right? So mm -hmm. well, you don't know in the, in the state of uh, Georgia, monkeys are not allowed to be, you know, carried or, and, you know, travel <laughs> and put them in just any vehicle and bring them to a, a location shoot. So I had to go to like uh, out of state Myrtle beach. So, Sure enough, you know, in comes this, uh, you know, urban assault vehicle with no windows. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? And it was the monkey. It was the monkey. So the whole theme around that concept was, you know, you deserve more than a monkey with a wrench than, um, you know, a monkey, you know, actually doing your plumbing. So what we would do is, is we would, we would put a monkey driving a school bus, right? So we just mm. shot monkey you know you know actually driving actually at the seat of the school bus and the line was you know you wouldn't let a a, a monkey drive your kids to school why would you let uh an experienced you know plumber monkey you know fix your plumbing and it was an awesome campaign it was <laughs> awesome campaign. we did that for hair cutting you wouldn't let a monkey cut your hair why would you oh, wow you fix your plumbing so yeah it was awesome we we shot all day and and I ran the heck out of those spots. And, and and you talk about a branding play. Everybody was talking about those monkey ads. Everybody was talking <laughs> about those monkey ads. Uh, you know, that was super successful, super successful. Had a lot of fun with that uh, that that campaign. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So um, let's say for these companies that are small to medium, they're looking for a guy like Derek. They're, they're maybe around the corner. When should they implement an expert like you? Is there a revenue? Is there a tenure and age and employee count where they should say, hey, we really should be thinking about getting outside counsel, not just trying to, you know, get an intern who's in high school or college to help us figure out TikTok or something crazy. Yeah, Chayton, actually, I'm, I'm just working now with a startup, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, cool. a bathroom remodeling startup. And I literally came up with a company name. I came up with a slogan. You know, I'm working on wow. a venue. I'm working on a venue number. You know, um, I'm putting together the budget strategy. So yeah, so this particular company, you know, only did three hundred thousand in 2023. So the revenue is not really there to do a lot of marketing. But you know, hey, there's only one way to go is up. So, but to answer your question, you know, uh, you could be a startup. You could be doing a half a million a year. You could be doing a million a year. You know, I've always said. Yeah, I got a lot. I call them Richieisms, Chayton. You know, that's my last name. <laughs> a lot of Richieisms, and one of my Richieisms is, you know, the sooner you get started marketing and branding your company, the sooner you achieve your end goal. Now, I'll say it again: the sooner you start branding and marketing your company, the sooner you'll achieve your end goal, whatever that is—10 million, 15 million. So. You know, the sooner you get started, the better. You know, that's the gist of, of the answer to your question. I mean, you know, so, sure. you know, you can always start off with a small campaign. Let me give you an example. I've got a brand new foundation repair company I'm working with. And, you know, there was no budget there. Uh, mm. You know, as I was putting together the marketing matrix, which is how I manage my clients. And basically, I found five grand. I found oh, cool. I found five grand by 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 adjusting the budget elsewhere with some other marketing sources and pulled out five grand. Well, guess what? I went out and did what is called a rotary billboard digital deal, which now billboard companies are selling their product as a cost per thousand, not mm. like they have in the past, but you know, on a per as a per unit rate type of uh, fixed price. So basically, for a little under five grand. You know, uh, I was able to achieve 1.25 million eyeballs over the course of four weeks, you know, wow. which is a cost per thousand of around four dollars, which is mm. incredible for a billboard campaign. And and they're basically all over town. They're running on highway boards. It's called a rotary, you know, what I call popcorn style billboard buy. And only I know this because, you know, they don't really push it. Um mm actual reps for the billboard company. So, you know, it's a super cool campaign, super affordable. And, uh, Hey, I got them started, you know, uh, with, with billboards when they came at me with, Hey, we don't have the budget. We don't have the money. So I'm able to find the money, re kind of reallocate the budget, you know, with my clients and, and move money around. And, you know, it, it just, uh, it's going to be a super successful campaign for this particular, uh, waterproofing company. That's awesome. 
And can you tell me, we talked about consistency earlier. I'm big with that. Um, and guys, everyone listening, that could be your health, nutrition, going to the gym, you know, a, a relationship, being able to have maybe a date night once a week or, or something, you know, put away the phone when you get home. So that way you guys can focus together. What does consistency in, in all practice mean for you, Derek? Like, just like you mentioned, start somewhere and think of consistency. Like, are you going to pay your taxes every year? Great. You should have an allocation for marketing every year or every quarter. Um, how have you seen the consistency take effect? Obviously, you've helped these companies go from a few million or, or even startup to going consistently down the pathway to much greater success. Are you seeing a lot of times companies are doubling revenue in a certain period of time? Are they, you know, 1.5 xing it in a certain amount of time? Like, just help paint the picture of the consistency and how that actually comes to life for people listening. Yeah. So, so I don't have a magic wand, you know, <laughs> you know, that guarantees a certain percentage growth, you know, with, with my marketing strategy, you know, okay. it's a lot that affects a company's, uh, you know, profit revenue and, and with regards to achieving their revenue goals and their, their projections, there's a lot involved, but to answer your question, you know, Again, I implemented this marketing matrix, which is basically, you know, an Excel spreadsheet on steroids to manage my client's marketing budget strategy and to manage their expectations. Mm. You know, so what I do is the last thing I want to do is is over promise and under deliver. So what I what I do is I under promise and over deliver. But to directly answer your question, consistency really is key. Now, what I do is if we're not achieving our monthly goals, you know, and the marketing budget percentage all of a sudden balloons up over double digits when we're supposed to be around eight, well, then I got to adjust the budget. So what I don't, what I don't recommend doing uh, to answer your question, Jane, is canceling an existing marketing source because you shouldn't have done it in the first place. Uh, mm. You would have been much happier taking that money if you're going to cancel and taking a trip with your family and friends you know, versus, uh, you know, canceling it, you know, and, 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 and not giving it the consistency, the time to really kick in and really to, to really work. So I've always told, you know, I've told everybody, I tell people, I give advice all the time to even non-clients, people that aren't my clients. Look, if you need to cut back, if you, if, if you, you know, if you're having a hard time paying your bills, don't cancel the whole thing. Just cut mm. it, cut it in half, cut it by a third. You know, keep something running. Keep keep it running. Keep keep the buy running. Cut it in half so that you know you put you know fifty percent back in your pocket, but you're still out there. You're still in front of the public. You're still in front of the consumer. You know, the biggest mistake the biggest mistake advertisers make, Jayden, is they they cancel and and cut it off, and and or don't run during the slow season. Let me touch on that, Jayden. So yeah, another big mistake advertisers make is they think during the slow months that they don't need to advertise sure. because the demand's not there or the seasonality of their business is not there. Well, guess what? That's a perfect time to capture market share over your competition. Oh yeah. That is a, the perfect time because guess what your competitors are doing? They're cutting back. They're canceling their marketing. They're trying to save money. They're, they're in survival mode. Well, guess what? That's the time where you want to put your pedal to the metal mm. you know, as an advertiser. And, and stay the course, right? And, and this is back to your consistency question. Here's right. a good here's a good example. Advertisers need to keep marketing themselves during their slow season. Mm -hmm. Super important. Doesn't mean you need to invest the same amount of money. You know, again, cut it back. You know, but stay, but keep your keep your keep your marketing stuff running. Don't cancel it because you cancel it for four or five months during your slow season. It didn't take you more than four or five months to ramp it back up again. Now you missed out on your busy season. Mm. So, you know, you really want to stay the course during your, during your slow months. You know, in other words, you need to run year round, really. Right. And I, I think you already identified this, but maybe just to clarify with the audience, you're saying more or less, you know, look a year out and say, hey, we're committed to $80,000 spend in a year. And then with your uh, your wisdom of sorts, this is genius. I don't think a lot of people do this well. You're allocating a percentage the year thereafter because they want to grow the year thereafter. A lot of these companies, I think you're you're kind of identifying, is they'll say it's 80 grand. 
It's 80 grand. It's every, you know, every year, every quarter, every what have you. That's that. And you're like, wait a second, guys, Let, basic math. You want to grow every year, right? Like when we talk this time next year, we want to talk growth. So can you just kind of go through that real quickly for our audience to kind of hear that in an example of what we could say 10 grand, a quarter, 80 grand a year, what have you, and how you do that percentage year over year so they can get continued growth? Yeah. So let me use the, let me use the analogy of an actual existing client. I'll keep, keep their name confidential for obvious sure. reasons, but basically, you know, it's a really good example. So I came in in the month of, uh, what was it? Probably September. I started working with them and basically I did exactly what, what I do, my model. I went ahead and plugged in what they, what they're currently doing, what they've been doing, you know, so I knew where the budget was. And then what I did was, is I basically adjusted the budget that that included me, included mm -hmm. my vendors, included my new strategy, right? All under budget. So wow. I was able to include my marketing consulting fee, uh, the the new billboard marketing source, you know, under and I was able to do it under their current under the budget of the previous year. And it looks, it looks like the company, I just did their marketing, I just updated their marketing matrix, matrix through December. And it looks like we over exceeded the 20% increase projected goal. You know, we're up around 22% from 2023 to 2022. So, you know, uh, and, and, and I, I did that, you know, I wasn't, you know, entirely responsible for that because I didn't come in until September of 23. But the last four months of 23, I did some damage because yeah. there, was, there was some nice increase incremental numbers year to date, September, October, November, December, over over 22. And again, I won't take all the credit. You know, I actually have a meeting with them today. I'm not going to take all the credit, but I am. what I am going to say is, hey, we're on our way. We're on course, you mm. know. So, so then what I do, you know, and here's a good segue. What I do then, Chayton, is now I'm going back today with this client and I'm going to be talking about, you know, increasing the budget. And I'm right. able and I'm able to do that because we had, you know, 22% increase in revenue, 23 over 22. So now that marketing budget percentage on a bigger number is now a bigger budget. So then I can then recommend doing some other forms of marketing. This particular client needs some video. Need some case mm. videos, need some video testimonies, need some video clips for social media. So, so I'm going to propose today with this particular client, you know, an annual video package that will will get them some good video, company overview, a sales production process video that they can utilize on their YouTube channel because they don't have a lot of video. So that's mm. that's that's what I do. So now, adversely, you know, if, if you look at my startup, you know. Their marketing budget is, you know, a couple thousand a month. This mm. particular this particular client budget that I'm talking about is thirty thousand a month. Okay. So because they're doing six, seven, eight million a year. So, you know, again, you've got to have the revenue to be able to to incur a multi ten thousand dollar monthly budget. You got the revenue's got to be there, and it takes time to get there. This particular company's been around fifteen years. My startups, you know, just started up this past summer. So, mm. yeah, it just depends on where that company's at, you know, in their in their journey, in their process. But, you know, and 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 what's great about me too, Chayton, you know, uh, is that you know, you, you know, you get you get to hire me for pennies on a dollar. You know, I yeah. I am not the big agency that needs twenty five, thirty grand a month. You know, what I do is, is, you know, my retainers are anywhere from, you know, $500 to eight grand a month. And my retainers are totally based on the size of the company and how much time I think it's going to take to, uh, to manage that, that particular account. So it, right. yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's an awesome model. Like I said, I've tweaked it and molded it and modified it and changed it over the last 32 years to, you know, to get, you know, to be current and with the times. Yeah. Well, and plus too, like the amount of revenue you could be accountable for, you know, if they're doing $6 million a year and you come in, it's going to be a way different mark than if it's a startup, you may help the startup percentage wise or multiplier increase the revenue a ton, 
but they're not going to be able to say, hey, you helped us make an extra $3 million in two years, perhaps. Maybe in the startup's case, it's an extra million or something like that. So yeah, right. I always look at it when we talk to our potential clients or even current clients and I say, hey, you already give me a dollar. And at first, I only give you back 50 cents, you know, maybe the first quarter. And then that becomes 75 cents. Then it becomes a dollar. And you're, all right, yeah, now we're even. But then we're going to go up and up and up and up and up. And yeah, some quarters, some years, it doesn't always be a dollar for $3 or something. Or excuse me, $3 is your input and we're gonna give you $9 or $3 is your input and we're gonna give you $6. Sometimes it does kind of go back and forth, up and down, but similar to the economy, you have your ups and downs or kind of crests in your troughs, but it's going up and towards the right, just like your revenue and your profit and things like that. Right. Um, I'd love to hear, Derek, on your end with branding, how that influences employment. Employment's a huge deal, obviously, so many different factors over the last few years. How does your branding do something other than just getting dollars through the company? I, I have to assume we see it as well in our business, how it impacts employment and retention of employees. Yeah, that, you know what, Chayton, that, that is super tricky. Um, you know, yeah, as you, as a company grows, right, the, the, the infrastructure that they have internally is absolutely key along with the sales and, you know, uh, the processes within their company. You know, I have tweaked my model slightly to help out on the sales side. So mm -hmm. I, I have helped out on the sales manager side a little bit with my clients, with their salespeople, because I'm also a salesperson and I've got some sales skills. You know, now with regards to your question, yeah, if you – like for example, this particular foundation company that I took from three million to eighteen million, you know, they went from a couple crews to fifteen crews. Wow. Yeah. That's so the yeah. So so now you've got to have a system and process in place to be able to train, bring, bring, bring entry level production people in, you know, and train them, you know, to move mm -hmm. them in the ranks to be able to do the work and lead a team. So that is a that is a whole nother process. My my I personally do not get involved with that, but okay. you are but you are correct. That that is that is a you know a game changer for these businesses. So now I've got, you know, uh, you know I know people right. So I've been doing this a long time. So I you know my sister in fact, she's a human resource person for hire. So what I do is I bring her in and and she helps fill these positions. Uh, for me. So it's kind of a, a good one, two punch that, uh, you know, referral business for her. But, but yeah, you are correct because if you don't have, you know, the right people behind the scenes, you know, call comes in. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. Appointments got to be made. The sale has to be made. Then it's got to be put on the books Then it's got to be scheduled for production. And then you got to have a, you know, walkthrough with the supervisor. You got to get paid. I mean, yeah. So you are, you are correct. That, that has been a, not a problem, but that mm -hmm. has been, been a concern for these small businesses that are doing a million, two million, and then all of a sudden they jump to three. Three million, Chayton, is the kind of the, the number where you've got to, you really have to get help and have systems and processes in place. You can, you know, a company can wing it from a million, from a half a million to three million. But I, I've noticed right around three million is where they, most companies have got to put together massive systems and processes, you know, if they want to take their company to 10, 15 million. Yeah, no, that's definitely fair. How yeah. about the, the work that you do in the aspect of it attracting new employees? I would imagine that you guys have seen an uptick. And of course, there's that difficulty with the solutions and, and you know, really having a process. Have you seen how happy clients are from the work that you're doing? to get branding and, and leads and things like that, but also how it, it could possibly bring in a nice pool of good uh, applicants, employees. Yeah. I imagine they gotta be very happy about that. Higher yeah. quality comes with the work that you're doing, not just in the form of money coming in the door, but human capital coming in the door as well. Yeah, absolutely. For example, this particular client that I'm working with now, you know, that billboard campaign, they get a lot of calls from, you know, from people that wanna work with this particular company, right? Cool. And, and the reason why is, is because they've got, you know, 27 different boards up popping all over town, 
you know, they look like they're a credible, you know, professional, honest, you know, company that people actually want to want to work for. So you are correct. Uh, you know, with that, with those branding mediums, you know, it does build that brand, which causes, you know, uh, you know, individuals and people to want to work for that company, you know? So yeah, it, that, that is, that is one of the benefits of branding. Absolutely. Yeah. And another aspect too, is it makes the current team members feel like, Hey, we're on a mission. We're doing something. We're not old school or antiquated. Like my face, because let's say the, the branding has the team, uh, my face is on a billboard like that really, really instills in a world today where especially larger, more corporate people aren't loyal to each other, be it the corporation not being loyal to their employees, the employees not being loyal to the corporation. When you're able to do it, at, I don't care if it's a medium or a small scale business, the sort of people that are attracted to some of these jobs that makes a, a huge difference that they're in a, let's say, an internal testimonial of the company or they're on a billboard, or they're in, it could be an email newsletter that they right. just feel like, wow, I'm being recognized. And, you know, it may not be to uh, a Super Bowl advertising audience, but it's to an audience of people in our community. And from time to time, someone might say, hey, I saw you on the billboard. That was really cool. And they're like, all right, this makes me feel good. The work that we're doing that helps pay my bills um, is really, you know, making an impact in the community. So I think that's, sometimes a hidden aspect, the employment being attracting people as well as retaining people in these corporations, these businesses is a, a large part because of what you're doing, which obviously makes them money, but also helps them continue to keep their people happy and, and bring in new bodies. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Super cool. So we talked about the, the popcorn ads, let's say foundation waterproofing company, they are at $2 million a year. Um, maybe we'll do this as an example of sorts. What would Derek do to to potentially give insight on mediums of how to advertise? Would it be more the popcorn style? Would it be a certain number of billboards, radio ads? Like just a random example. They haven't done anything other than word of mouth. They're at $2 million a year. They're a waterproofing foundation company. Um, I may be throwing a hardball at you, but I, I would love to see maybe how you dissect that and help people understand what mediums they should be thinking of. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, Chayton, you know, there, I consider the three big branding mediums, billboards, radio, and TV. Those are the, those are to me, the, the big, you know, billboard, radio, TV, the big branding mediums. Now of the three, my favorite, depending on the city, you know, Atlanta mm -hmm. is top five as far as driving time to and from work. So, you know, Atlanta is a great city for billboards because the traffic people mm -hmm cars and people are driving 38 minutes plus, you know, to and from work. So depending on the market, I, I would recommend uh, billboards coming out of the gate. What's great about, okay. yeah, what's great about billboards is, you know, the billboard company, the billboard industries have moved to digital. Mm. So now you don't have to pay for that vinyl right that 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 tears and rips and discolors after a year you don't have to replace it so you don't have any production costs per se and most billboard companies will create your ad for free you cool. know internally so now you got no creative costs you got no production costs and you can change the creative at will because it's digital it's literally a push of a button so for example my new client my new foundation repair client I was able to add a holiday creative in the month of December pretty easy, mm. pretty quickly, you know, within 24 hours at no cost, wow. to, at no cost to my client chain. So, you know, whatever your message is, you know, you can change it pretty quickly, uh, pretty easily and, and at no cost. So to, to, to answer your question too, you know, if the budget's a couple grand, no problem. Let's put up mm. a couple boards and get started you know we can always add to the buy you can always add more billboards and remember my my richieism earlier you know the sooner you start branding the sooner you'll achieve your end goal mm, right so, so let's get started let's get in the gate let's get in the gate using the horse race analogy once the gates open guess what when the gates open you now have billboards up you're in the race, right? You're right. in the 
So you've got billboards up. Whether it's one or two or three, doesn't matter. You don't need to have 27. You don't need to have, you know, uh, 15, 20 boards. We can build and grow to that. And then and then the second medium there out of the gate, you know, I love some 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 TV. You know, nowadays with with you know streaming ads and cable, you know, cable ads, you can really target geographically and target your listener and target your viewer, you know, with regards to the technology nowadays. So, and you could do it super, very affordably, you know, so mm -hmm. you can target geographically right around a 15 mile radius, you know, right around your business, you know, with, you know, and, and achieve economies of scale and, and good logistics for your, for your production team, you know, for 1500 a month, you know, wow. now, now you've got some costs that you have to, you know, you have to produce some TV spots and, you know, you know, so you have some extra production costs there. And then finally, radio. Radio is super catchy. You know, I always recommend when you do radio, you have to have one of the the station talents be your endorser. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to go on radio and not have one of the on air talents, you know, endorse you as a company. That could be anywhere from three to five hundred bucks a month. It's a hundred percent worth it. I highly recommend having somebody endorse, you know, your company if you if you go on radio. And you can really own what's great about running on radio, Chayton, is you can really own that listener. Mm. So, uh, you know, there, there's a station in town called 92.9 The Game in Atlanta. And I'm very close with my rep there. And a lot of my clients have run on that station. Little shout out to 92.9 The Game. It, you know, they've got, they're, they're just a force, you know, uh, for mm. talk. Now, it's obviously predominantly a male listener. So sure. it all depends who you want to target. But Boy, you can really own that listener because that listener always listens to that station. Mm. So it's a really small universe, right? It's not a big universe, you know, relative to the big Metro Atlanta area. But if you want to reach male sports enthusiasts, that's how you want to go about doing it. And, and, and by the way, male sports enthusiasts have a lot of disposable income. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because they're the ones going to all the games, or the ones usually they play golf. I mean, they're they right. they have income. So I've had a lot of success with my my sports talk radio station here in Atlanta with uh, several clients over the years. Yeah, it's fascinating. Usually they're college educated. They have a wife potentially yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who wants things to be prim and proper. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the husband wants to please her and and make sure that stuff's taken care of. That's interesting. And like you're saying, own it. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here with foundation repair, waterproofing is uh, of course, and you do the same in your business with home services, you know, the scale and the scope and how you're going to get the nuts and bolts taken care of, but just kind of honing in. Um, I was just on a podcast the other day and we were talking about, you know, boiling the ocean. It's a big thing. Consultants always talk about, let's not boil the ocean. Let's like boil the pond or let's boil the puddle. Um, I think that that's huge for our clients. You know, if you could own a spot, especially like the one that you just referenced, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, Chayton. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it, there's so many different options out there when it comes to marketing. You know, so many different options. And, and, and what I do with my 32 years of experience, I just dummy it down. You know, mm -hmm. I guess. Dummy it down and keep it really simple. The old kiss method, keep it step, simple, stupid, you know, and, 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 and another thing I say too, Chayton is I'm not emotionally attached to these businesses. Mm. Because they're not my business. Right. So I come in as an outsider, as a third party, and I'm just here to do business. I'm here to increase the business. I'm here to make the phone ring. I'm here to help them achieve their dreams you know, their company corporate dreams. So yeah, I mean, it, it's not, I, I, I make it really simple and, and, and keep it really, you know, and it works, you know, simple, you know, consistent, uh, you know, whatever the budget is, I can work with any budget, you know, the budget can be five grand a month. It could be my, I, the biggest budget I ever had with a, with a, with a plumbing company was 107,000 a month. Wow. So Amazing. that, that was a huge budget. I had a six figure budget monthly that I was responsible for managing and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. That's yeah. amazing. That was the, the monkey 
commercial? Yeah, that was a monkey right. commercial. Yes, yeah. Man, the yeah. things you could do with six figures a month. You got monkeys. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah, especially with my model. I mean, I can do a lot with a hundred grand a month. And you know, again, a hundred grand a month, you know, if you're doing fifteen million, that's that's you know, that's your budget. I mean, that right. that's you know, that's where you need to be, you know, a million dollar budget on a on a, a 10 plus million dollar company, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's something all of our audience could could work up to. And frankly, some of our audience are, are even past that in certain right. instances. Right. So um, I love it. Yeah. What you're doing is very scalable. It's something that people can consume. And again, kind of reminding everyone listening is if you're going to ask marketing people like Derek and I, um, hey, I want to I want to do another million dollars a year next year. It's like, all right, great. Well, I'm not going to be able to help you for a hundred dollars a month. Like the the world is not silly enough yet, and I hope it never will be. That for a hundred dollars a month, twelve hundred dollars a year, you think that's going to help you make an extra million? You know, you have to be somewhat reasonable. And, and most of the money, you know, it's not going to Derek's pocket or my pocket. It's mainly going to advertisers, which is is the name of the game. So just thinking, guys you you have to put skin in the game things in business can be magical and, and there are certain times that you have an upside and stuff but you want to keep the upside it's very much like you mentioned with seasons if you're going to the gym commit to going to the gym it's a lifelong thing you know don't do it a few weeks before it's beach season you know that's that's just not going to work the muscles aren't going to pop you're not going to be able to cut the fat to show the abs um you know you're not going to be able to fit in that bikini you wanted to if, if you're just doing it with that kind of time frame every single year you need to be more consistent and that could be two times a week. It could be five times a week, but some sort of consistency with diet, with showing up to the gym. It's the same thing as here. It's, it's with paying someone like Derek, paying someone like my team and I, uh, and, and Derek's team as well. You got to focus on being able to pay these people that can do the magic, but the magic doesn't happen in a bottle. It doesn't happen overnight. Then of course, a lot of the magic as well with, with kind of a captain of that capital, like someone like Derek, it's going to be going towards the advertisers. You know, you, you can't just have someone like Derek come in, snap their fingers, and you not pay anything other than Derek and his team. You have to cover the bases, uh, you know, for the advertising because you can't be greedy and not expect to spend some money. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You know, the world doesn't reward that mentality. And sometimes you have to kind of talk that through with maybe the smaller and medium companies. Um, but yeah, Derek, this has been awesome. We probably need a part two one day. Anything that you have left to share with the audience and obviously, you know, let us know how we can get in touch with you as a sign off. Yeah. Yeah. No, this has been an honor. Uh, really have enjoyed it. Thanks so much for having me on your podcast. And yeah, I, you know, uh, yeah, just, you know, if anybody's interested, they can reach out to me, you know, uh, Derek Richie, D-E-R-E-K, Richie, R-I-T-C-H-I-E and my phone number. Should I get my phone number, Chayton? Sure. Totally yeah. up to you. The best way to get a hold of me is texting me. Um, I'm a big texter. My cell number is 404-791-8189. That's 404-791-8189. And, uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. And uh, it's my first podcast ever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So how how'd I do? Did I do good? <laughs> yeah, great. And I'm going to wrap up the show in just a quick second. Who Who is best to reach out to you, Derek? Tell me. Is there an ideal segment, ideal geography, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I've worked with other clients outside of Atlanta, so that's not a problem. But no, no, it's the home service category businesses, you know, the roofer, the plumber, the electrician, the tree company, you know, the landscaper, the flooring guy, you know, any any company that has to do with uh, home services. And yeah, I mean, I can help them grow. And, and again, it doesn't matter your size. You know, I work with any size business. You know, you don't have to be a certain size. So yeah, so... No, this has been great. I really, really greatly appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. Thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of Foundation Repair Success Secrets here with Derek, the master brander and marketer of home service businesses. Uh, we will catch you guys in the next episode. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today for another revealing episode of Foundation Repair Marketing Secrets. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep discovering the tools, tactics, and techniques to ensure your online presence is as solid as the foundations you repair. Keep digging deep, and we'll see you in the next episode.